Guys, this is Dr. Mobin. We are talking about immunology. Our today's lecture is about T cell receptors. So, T cell receptors are, of course, present in the surface of the T cell. The important thing today is that number one, we understand how the T cell receptor structure is, number two, how it is formed, and number three, how it functions in combination with CD3, and number four, uh, what is the role of T cell related. Uh, molecules in SCID or severe combined immunodeficiency disease. If you see here, I have also put the immunoglobulins here. T cell receptor has a great resemblance functionally, structurally and in terms of creation to immunoglobulins. They almost are similar and then there are some differences as well. So, I put them over here slightly unfair because I have not covered immunoglobulins before. We will talk about them later on, but here we would create a foundation which will be useful for immunoglobulins as well as much as it would be useful for T cell receptor lecture today. So, let us start. The very first thing that we should understand instead of T cell receptor structure, let us understand the immunoglobulin receptor structure or immunoglobulin structure itself. The reason for that is that T cell is actually a part T cell structure is a part of the immunoglobulin structure. So, let us see that. Immunoglobulin recept, immunoglobulins themselves are made up of four chains, four peptide chains, four proteins. So, they look like Y. So, here is one chain. Then, if I make another chain here, this is one more chain. So, my marker is running out of ink, but I hope you can see it. So, these are two chains. I will I'll name them in a, in a few. Then here, two more chains. And you can see that these are smaller chains. These are rightfully called light chains. These are bigger chains called the heavy chains. So, four peptide chains come together to form an immunoglobulin molecule, two light chains and two heavy chains. So, these are light chains, light chains and these guys, the red ones are heavy chains, heavy chains. Now, on the board here, this structure is two dimensional, but actually it is a 3D structure in which antigens bind. So, let us continue talking about it a little bit more. The light chains are further divided into variable and constant regions, variable and constant regions. Heavy chains are also divided into variable, constant, constant, constant. So, there are in the heavy chain, there is one variable region and then there is constant 1, constant 2 and constant 3, 3, 2 to 3 constant regions. So, let me make them here 1, 2, 3. Then in some books, you would actually see that with this V, there will be an L. So, that L stands for the light chain. With this constant, there will be an L. So, that also stands for the light chain. Similarly, here you would see heavy which really as you can tell only depicts the where this particular segment belongs to. So, this is a segment. Again, these are proteins. Now, in this immunoglobulin structure, these four chains, they are attached to each other with disulfide bonds. So, if you can make it out. These are S. So, sulfide sulfide bond, disulfide bonds, S and S. So, disulfide bonds connect these chains together. Light chains are connected to the heavy chain and then heavy chains are connected to each other as well. These chains or this molecule in, is then further divided into this area this area is called fraction or fragment AB, antigen binding, because you would see 
shortly that these variable regions are where the antigens bind. On the other hand, the remaining part here is called fraction or fragment C, C standing for constant. So, this immunoglobulin molecule is dividable into two functional areas. One functional area is the fraction antigen binding and the other functional area is fraction constant. I think you know that fraction constant performs two very important functions. It performs many, but two are very important. One is the complement fixation and that is a USMLE question, complement fixation. So, the question will be what part of the immunoglobulin molecule helps with the complement fixation? The constant region number 2 on a heavy chain is the one which will be responsible for complement fixation. So, complement comes and attaches here and becomes fixated. Then the other is this part is also a USMLE question that what part of an immunoglobulin is used to be attached to various cells. For example, IgE immunoglobulin E attaches to mast cells using this area. So, this part here is the receptor area FC receptor binding receptor binding area right. So, normally in general we can lump these kind of functions together into saying these are biological functions biological functions and these are immunological functions. FAB performs immunological functions and then the FC performs biological functions. Now, let us talk about the FC, FAB a little bit. In this area, the variable region is the region where this is the region where an antigen binds. So, antigens bind here. So, how does an antigen bind? If I come here for a second and show you the structure of this region, let us say that the VH, so I am going to make 1 and 2 these two regions. So, let us say this is V variable region of the heavy chain that is this guy and I will make a slightly 3D ish picture here. So, let us say this is the region right and then if I make the light chain and that guy's region here as well. So, this is the heavy chain. So, light chain would also have so this is a light chain. do that. I am becoming an artist slowly while teaching you guys and here. So, let us say this is the V L and this is the V H. In here the antigen, so do you see these regions, these little grooves? Here an antigen amino acid sequence can be connected, can fit. If an antigen's amino acid sequence cannot fit in this area, then that antigen cannot bind here. Then that antigen cannot bind here. For example, if I have an antigen which looks like this, do you think this antigen can fit in here? No. Only an antigen of this structure can fit in there. So, the structure is looking like this, like this. some structure like this can fit in here, but not this one right. So, that is the importance of the variable region. So, does that mean then that one immunoglobulin can only connect or bind with one antigen, one kind of antigen? Yes. So, what if I have a bacteria which came into our body or a fungus or a virus or, a, or another you know a helmet something. So, let us say this is a bacteria, this bacteria came into the body, neutrophils attacked it, 
natural killer cells may have attacked it which they would not. Uh, opsonization would occur, complement would occur. So, let us say at the end of macrophage would take it up, eat it up and slice and dice it and throw the small pieces out. So, let us say we broke the bacteria into smaller pieces, we fragmented the bacteria. If there is a fragment coming out of this bacteria which looks like this, then that fragment can go and attach here. There may be another fragment from this bacteria from the same bacteria which looks like this and that might attach to another amino globulin. There might be another fragment of this bacteria which looks like let us say this, I am just going to invent another fragment and that might attach to a different amino globulin. What does that different mean? So, some of you here you have read about amino globulins, you know that amino globulins are of kind G, M, A, D and E. So, when I say different amino globulin do I mean M or G or A or D or E? No, 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 no. The difference in amino globulin name that is M, G, A, D, E is because of the type of heavy chain constant regions. That means this area does not change. Do you know that if I have, so let us say I have this markers. Let us say this is immunoglobulin M and this is the antigen binding area. If I take this antigen binding area and I attach immunoglobulin handle, let us say this is D. In here, now this is immunoglobulin D, but the binding site is still the same. So, if a particular kind of antigen binds here, that antigen is still going to bind in the same area. The only difference is that because the, the constant region was of different type, the antigen was called M or G or D or A or E. So, we will talk about it when we do immunoglobulins that why are these handles different, why are these constant regions different. But important thing to note at this time, the variable region is the same variable region is constant while this thing, I, I like to see it this way that if you have a wrench with which you can hold something and if you have a chance to change the handle colors, these would be different type of immunoglobulins. But when I talk here a different kind of immunoglobulin, that means an immunoglobulin which has a variable region which can bind with this or this or this. So, that would mean, so this immunoglobulin you are seeing here, there may be another immunoglobulin which has a region, variable regions like this. There may be another immunoglobulin with the variable regions like that. So, we are talking about these two guys. So, one pathogen, please remember this, this is a very important thing. One pathogen can give rise to so many fragments which are different. It is just like you break a glass, you are going to get a lot of pieces which are going to look different every piece of that glass can be called an antigen and every one is different from the other one and so it would combine with a different immunoglobulin variable binding region. That is why this is important to understand that when a pathogen attacks a body, the response is polyclonal, the response is polyclonal. What that means is more than one kind of cells react because that fragments from that pathogen are going to be more than one type, these would bind to more than one type of immunoglobulins, these are going to bind to more than one type of T cell receptors and so more than one cells would react. However, if only one kind of cell is reacting, if you see in a person that you have a lot of immunoglobulins, but only one kind, the variable region is the same. The, the handle is the same, it is either G or M or D or E or A. That is monoclonal immunoglobulins or monoclonal T cells that most commonly is a sign of cancer. That most commonly is a sign of abnormal proliferation of the cells because there is no single pathogen which would only trigger one kind of antigen immunoglobulin or one kind of T cell only. 
every pathogen imagine a bacteria or a virus or a fungus or a helmet is like a piece of glass you break it you are going to get a lot of pieces which are different fragments and they are going to trigger and bind with different kinds of immunoglobulins good. So, now let us come back here we talked about the variable region. So, variable region is very important from this point of view that this region is used for this region is used for antigen binding. Now let us come back to the T cell receptor for a second. T cell receptor looks very much like the FAB portion of immunoglobulin that is why I went to immunoglobulin first. T cell receptor looks very much like the FAB portion of the immunoglobulin. So, if I take this portion and bring it over here and I said VLC and I said VLC this I took this part and I brought it here and instead of calling this a light chain and a heavy chain if I called one of them an alpha chain and the other one a beta chain then I connected you know this hinge region here a similar region here with disulfide bonds and then I remember so now there is no constant 2 and 3 there is one constant one light so this two then I attached this thing to a cell a T cell this will become a T cell receptor this is so funny if you pick up this area of an immunoglobulin and stick it into a cell it would become a T cell receptor if that cell is a T cell. Now one more thing this is very very important point this receptor T cell receptor what do you think how many antigen binding sites it should have how many are here there are two antigen binding sites one is here and the other one is here one is here and the other one is here and I said that we will just take this portion and bring it here. So, how many antigen binding sites only one. So, one antigen binding site two antigen binding sites okay, we will continue. 